All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hey. What's going on today, YouTube? It's Adventure Link here. And today we are working on a 1997 Toyota Camry LE. This has the... 5S-FE 2.2 liter four-cylinder engine and the Ace and Warner A140E automatic transmission. And for today's show, we're going to be working on the thermostat to get it changed. Please note this should apply to pretty much all 5S-FE four-cylinder applications. This includes third and fourth generation 1993-2001 Toyota Camry, the fifth and sixth gen Toyota Celica, and the first gen Toyota Solera. Because of that, this video will get tagged appropriately and posted appropriately on YouTube. YouTube. If you have the V6 or some other version, this video will probably not be of any help to you. So as Joe Guerrero from the After Prison Show would say, why don't we go on in feet first, not head first, and dive right into this repair show today, shall we? Step zero is to make sure that you're working on a cold engine. It's step zero because if you're already on a cold engine like I am, given that it's like fried as heck out here today, <laughs> Then you know you're good to go. If it's not cold, then you're just kind of wait a while till it gets cold. Like if you're in the summertime, you know, it'll probably take like, say, four to six hours. Especially later on in the day for it to get cold, possibly even eight hours. Wintertime will only take you a couple hours or thereabouts. But otherwise, we got a cold engine, so yeah, I thought I'd get this fair warning right out of the way right now and to get it off the bat. Failure to heed this warning and do this anyway can cause your engine to seize or hydro lock or crack the block or whatever because you're thermal shocking it. Not to mention, you can get burned on hot coolant. Safety first on my channel, always, period. Next thing you'll do is put a catch can under the, under the vehicle here. If you want, you can raise up the... The right front tire here and put a catch can under it because there was barely enough clearance to get this under there even with the stock you know underneath the radiator support plate here it's all metal there's only enough room to get it under there just barely but it works alternatively you can you know disconnect the hose from the lower cool from the lower radiator drain it that way or you know what i'm saying just take off the radiator drain plug and drain it that way of course that all removes removing this lower plate I believe in the work smarter, not harder philosophy, and also drain out as much cooling as you need. I mean, why would I want to drain the entire system, but I'm just doing a thermostat, you know what I'm saying? Next thing you'll do is you'll spray some penetrating oil on these two fasteners right here. You want to spray it down at least a couple days in advance. That way it'll lessen the chance of you breaking these studs and nuts off. So, you know, like say, you know, give it like one spray once a day, or if we sneak in another spray, like say 12 hours later, you know, be, by my guess, be all means, the more longer it soaks and the more you spray it, the better off your chances will be. With that being said, the next step is you want to take a 10 millimeter box wrench. Got one here from Craftsman, not a sponsor, but it lets me, gives me enough room to clear this way. Now, normally the book says you have to remove this oil filter here, but... I don't really trust it at this angle, especially when I know it's probably going to leak oil everywhere and you got to change the oil out to get to the thermostat. But like I said, believing in the work smarter, not harder mantra. Boom. Got in with that 10 millimeter socket. And as Taraz Cool would say, boom. It's loose. Another reason you want to work on a cold engine is because I ended up hitting my hand on this plate here. And as you can see, there's that guard there, and it has the uh, the hand with the note with the X on it, meaning don't touch it, especially when it's hot. If this was hot, I would have got burned pretty badly on this. That 600 degrees or more of exhaust that heats up that plate there and the exhaust manifold. Not fun. Not a good time. Using just this 10 millimeter box wrench, I managed to get the nut off just fine. Alternatively, I've got my special tool. Da -da -da -da! My 10 millimeter wobble socket with an extension on my quarter inch drive ratchet. Now watch what happens. See, came loose just as easily. Boom. This will be important to know later because that way I can sneak a torque wrench in there. Boom. Which by the way, these Little fasteners get torqued down to 78 inch pounds. Now there's this other fastener that I can get access to. It's right there. Let's do it. I at least popped it loose. There we go. It's already wanting to leak out. Boom. Now hopefully it all catches the pan rather than... Well, I guess it is going to catch in the pan. Nice convenient drain there. Perfect. 
Now if I could position it a little better, that'd be great. Other than that, I suppose I'll just keep removing this nut and keep, and keep an eye on where the coolant goes and we'll see you in a bit. Later for now. Now, after you pull the thermostat out of the, off the engine, keep in mind there's this little hunk of metal like right there where my thumb is. That's called the jiggle valve. Like right on this provision here for the thermostat housing, that's where you need to line the jiggle valve up with. But all the same, the thermostat just pops right out. And they take some effort like this one was because it was kind of stuck in there. But as you can see, it came out nice and clean. Now from here, I suppose reversal of removal is your installation, but there are some procedures to follow. And here's the part number. I'm using the Toyota Lexus thermostat. Not a sponsor, as Eric O would say, but this is the one I decided to use. There's plenty of others you can use on Amazon, but as long as I can get the Toyota Lexus brand, that's what I'm using. As you can see, this is the uh, ASIN, that X00, that's your ASIN you want to search on Amazon for. Additionally, where that says Toyota 90916-03090, that's your thermostat part number from Toyota Lexus. So let's go ahead and put this in the car. Now, of course, you'll have to get another seal. Personally, this seal looks good and sealed it up pretty good. So I'm just going to reuse the seal. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to peel off the seal. Start it off by hand, you know, start back here. And then carefully take your thumb or nail finger or whatever, squeeze it down, remove it, boom, it's separated. And you'll pretty much put the seal back on the new thermostat the same way. Now I got the thermostat, the seal halfway started in. Keep in mind that there is a groove in the gasket in the back that sits in with this line here. That'll sit in nice and snug. And from there, I suppose you just take your fingers and just wiggle it on in there like so. Don't mind if I had to go off cam because this is kind of difficult with one hand and it's slick. <laughs> Alrighty, now that we got the jiggle valve pretty much in line with this little intrusion right here, this little provision, keep in mind that it can be installed, you know, within 5 degrees to the left or 5 degrees to the right. Just like so. Now from there, you just pretty much carefully slide it on in, slide it on home. So that way it just goes right in. Don't mind my big hands in the way here. But if it just falls out like that, like what it did, you'll have to check the alignment to make sure that the jiggle valve is in line with that provision. And like I said before, you want to screw down the nuts as, fat, as hand tight as you can first. Then you can fasten it down with, with a 10 millimeter socket or a wrench. So like I said, these are 78 inch pounds. Again, that's 78 inch pounds, not foot pounds. So make sure you set your torque wrench appropriately. As a free tip Friday filmed on a Tuesday or whenever this video goes on YouTube, just so you know, you will need to get an extension. I'd personally get a longer extension because I, as, I, as you can see, the torque wrench, you know, kept scraping across the shield. So I personally get a decent size extension, like say, this is like, I want to say this is like six inches, probably get one that's less like eight or 10 inches, or get a six inch or three inch extension, made it together. So you can use your wobble socket and sneak it on there to get these torque down to 78 inch pounds. Now from there, you'll top off your coolant. I prefer, you know, to use the same coolant as you had in there, which for me was that green stuff. I'm going to see if I can't either get some more green stuff or try to use some Xerox. Not a sponsor, as Erigo would say, and see if that works. Honestly, the only two mixtures I know of that, you know, would, would not go well together is green and Dex Cool. Thankfully, this is not GM, so I don't have to worry about this too much. Now, I'm using my EP Auto Funnel. Not a sponsor, as Erigo would say, to help me fill this out. Supposedly, it also helps me to bleed the system better. Just so you know, I saw video reviews about this coolant funnel from Eric the Car Guy and RichPin06A. So if you want to see an in-depth review and how-to on how this works, I would suggest look up EP Auto Spill Proof Funnel from Eric the Car Guy or from RichPin06A, depending upon who you like better or want to see more of or whatever, and just go to town. Basically, the, the goal is to start the engine up, have it idle. You want to stand it idle at all times, fill this up to like one-third, and then wash the coolant level. Then eventually, that'll bleed out all the air and of course i've heard of people getting overheating when they refill toyota systems i've heard that you can also put the heat on full blast also squeeze this upper radiator hose here where it's connected to the thermostat housing to help it bleed out the air better and faster and you should be good to go from there and after you get the, all the air blood out and you get the thermostat in check it for leaks and all that take it for a drive and it looks like this especially after you drove it around the block several times let alone on the expressway for say several miles then that's it you're all done you just replace the thermostat on your 5s-fe 2.2 liter toyota engine let's go wrap this up thermostats this is probably the, one of the more oddest ones i've ever had to do because normally a thermostat you know i'd either just take a piece of cardboard or my palm of my hand press it in, twist out, 
and twist in, boom. And also on Crown Vix and Grand Marquis, it was just take out, drop in, boom. This one, there's jiggle valves, everything, e everywhere. So this one was a little odd. Nothing too complicated or too major. Just follow the, the steps as I said. Get the proper funnel, that EA Auto Funnel or whatever that was. Let it run for a bit, preferably on full blast heat. Set it idle. Let all the air bubbles come out. Take it for a spin. Boom. Also make sure you keep it on the temperature gauge. Don't freak out if it climbs up a little bit normally because that's what it did. I took off and then the temperature gauge slowly went up and up and up. Then after, say, uh, several hundred yards, then it went back down to normal and stabilized. So... As a heads up, do be aware of that. So that way you don't claim to overheat because I was done warned about this. People working on these Toyotas and then people claim about them overheating and they probably didn't get all the air bubbles out. Like I said, use the funnel, squeeze your hoses, let the heat run full blast. Let it run for say 10, 15 minutes like that. You'll be just fine. Yeah. So with all that being said, I want to thank you for watching this and other videos I have here on YouTube. And I am Adventure Link. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, praise, criticism, whatever, please drop it in the YouTube comments below this video. Otherwise, be sure to rate, subscribe, share this video with your friends and family and other 5S-FE 2.2 liter Toyota owners, which, as I said before, covers the 3rd and 4th gen Toyota Camry. 5th and 6th gen Toyota Celica, and the 1st gen Toyota Solera. If you never want to miss another video from me again, what do you do? Gotta ring that bell! <laughs> Please be sure to do all those things. It helps me make a living here on YouTube. It gets my word out, and it lets me know if I'm doing a good job or not, not making crappy videos. Don't forget, if you have any questions about 3rd and 4th gen Toyota Camrys, please be sure to join the 3rd slash 4th gen Camry crew. That's K-R-E-W, of course. It's on Facebook. Additionally, if you have any questions about Toyota as a whole, be it, you know, the Toyota Crown, Toyota Tercel, or modern things that still made like Camry, Corolla, Prius, Highlander, etc., then join the Toyota Enthusiast Facebook group. Both links are in the video description. Be sure to join up, post your questions, find folks there, we'll answer your questions in a timely manner. Don't forget the medical bill donations. Well, it's got the social media. Links are in the video description. Please consider following those links, signing up, donating, follow me. Any amount helps out. And as Gaines to the Grave would say, those keep this channel and myself alive and undead. Now we're going to sign off with the wise words of wisdom from Eric the Car Guy, reminding you guys to be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. And as Eric o would say, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Take care. See you all for the next video. Till then, have a good rest of your day, evening, or whatever time of the day this is for you. Have a good one.